In this video on actuarial exam one, also called exam P on probability, we're going to do yet another Venn diagram problem. And once again, we'll take it in stages. First, I'll do the problem as quickly as possible, and that's the kind of approach you would want to take if you actually take the exam, because you want to be as quick as possible to get onto other problems. And then I'll be a bit more systematic. I'll take a step back, think about things in terms of notation, probability notation, set notation, intersections, unions, those kinds of things, complements, and talk about some probability laws that will help us for future videos and future problems that are more complicated. I'm calling this a Venn diagram problem with some tricky algebra. The algebra is not super tricky, just slightly tricky. And the extra content I want to introduce is a, one of De Morgan's laws and something called the general addition rule. In the last video, number three, we did the special addition rule for mutually exclusive or disjoint events. But in this video, we'll talk about the general addition rule that works for overlapping events, events that have an intersection that's non-empty. The general addition rule works in the special case where they are disjoint as well, but um, it also applies in the situation where they overlap. Okay. Um, I will also blog about these things at infinityisreallybig.com and in the blog posts about, say, maybe the last two videos that I'll probably work on later today, I will get into some proofs, for example, of a De Morgan law or two. All right. At the end, again, we'll look at Mathematica, we'll look at an animation. As a way of conceptualizing things, we will do some pretty neat things with Mathematica in future videos, and so that's something worth paying attention to. All right, here's the question. Among a large group of patients recovering from shoulder injuries, it is found that 22% visit both a physical therapist, PT for short, though I'm going to call it just T, and a chiropractor, I'll call that C, whereas 12% visit neither of these, not a chiropractor and not a physical therapist. The probability that a patient visits a chiropractor, this is phrased a little strangely, exceeds by 0.14 or 14% the probability that a patient visits a physical therapist. So that's saying that, for example, if the probability of visiting a physical therapist is 30%, uh, then the probability of visiting a chiropractor would be 44%, 30 plus 14. If it was 20%, then it would be uh, 34 for visiting a chiropractor because 34 is 20 plus 14. The goal is to calculate the probability that a randomly chosen member of this group visits a physical therapist. Okay, so let's draw our, di our Venn diagram, solve the problem as quickly as possible with as little work as possible. And, and again, it's good to not worry with simple problems like this about being too formal with our symbolism. So we've got our box representing the sample space, in a sense, all patients, all people in this large group that are recovering from shoulder injuries. Let's let this circle represent the people who visit a physical therapist, T for therapist, and this circle represent people who visit a chiropractor. Write down the given information. 22% visit both. So you want to label the intersection with a 0.22. Like that. 22%. Whereas 12% visit neither. 12% would be representing the people who are outside of both circles. They are not visiting a physical therapist and they are also not visiting a chiropractor. We want to figure out the goal here is to determine the probability that a randomly chosen person visits a ther physical therapist. If I label this crescent with X and this crescent with Y, we want to find the probability that they visit a physical therapist, in this symbolism, that is going to be the value of x plus 0.22. So if we can find x, then we can find x plus 0.22. We can find the answer to the problem. All right, we need to use the givens, plus the fact that all these probabilities that are labeling these four different regions have to add up to 1. Uh, so let's write down a couple equations here. We know that x plus y plus 0.12 plus 0.22 which of course is 0.34, has to add up to 1. That means x plus y equals 1 minus 0.34, which is 0.66. And maybe it would be useful to solve that equation for y. y would be 0.66 minus x. 
Again, if we can find x, we can solve the problem. The other equation relating x and y is related to this fact that's stated up here. The probability that the patient visits a chiropractor exceeds by 0.22 the probability that they visit a physical therapist, or by 0.14, excuse me. In the symbols that I have in the diagram, the probability of visiting a chiropractor is 0.22 plus y. We already know the probability of phys visiting a physical therapist is x plus 0.22. And we can easily solve this for y in terms of x as well. We can cancel the 0.22s. We can say y is x plus 0.14. So yeah, we're, we're getting pretty close to being done. This is some algebra. It's not super tricky, maybe just slightly tricky. These are our two equations that we can now combine to say that 0.66 minus x equals x plus 0.14. Uh, add x to both sides and subtract 0.14 from both sides, 0.52 would equal 2x. So x would be 0.52 divided by 2, which is 0.26. Careful, that's not the answer to the question. The answer to the question would be x plus 0.22. So the probability of visiting a physical therapist, the answer to the question is 0.26 plus 0.22. And that is going to be 0.48. Okay, that is the answer to the question. And looking in the list of possibilities, that ends up being answer D, okay, if you look online. That's the quick way to solve this. Some slightly tricky algebra. Now let's take a step back. Let's talk about what I've been doing recently, a formulaic presentation of the solution based on some laws, some rules, based on what I call the complement rule, one of de Morgan's laws, that which I haven't talked about yet, and something called the general addition rule which are all, well, except for De Morgan's Law, perhaps, it's all pretty intuitive. De Morgan's Law is intuitive if you're used to this kind of thing, but at first it seems a little confusing. Probably the hardest part about this is just the notation. So as we look at this, uh, we'll want to compare it with the diagram to help us understand it. So, remember, it seems a little out of focus here. Remember, intersection symbol, T intersects C means T and C. We're given that the uh, probability that a randomly chosen patient visits both the physical therapist and the chiropractor is 22%, 0.22. That's the intersection of T and, T, T and C, okay? We're also given that the uh, probability that they visit neither is 0.12. Not a physical therapist, T prime means not T, the complement of T. Also not C, not a chiropractor. Again, we have an intersection symbol meaning and. That's the 0.12. We're outside of both of them. Again, we're also told that the probability that they visit a chiropractor exceeds by 0.14, the probability that they visit a physical therapist. So this equation is true. We want to find P of T. So using these formal rules, what can we say? We have something again called the complement rule, which in general says the probability of the complement of an event is 1 minus the probability of that event. The probability of an event and its complement, and, and the probability of its complement have to add to 1. That's what I've got here. This thing right here is representing the A. I'm taking its complement. And so the answer is 1 minus the probability of that thing that I circled there, which we are given as being 0.12. That goes there, and so this is 0.88. What's De Morgan's Law? In general, De Morgan's Law could be, well, at least this version of De Morgan's Law could be written as A intersect B complement is A complement unioned with B complement. It's kind of like you can bring the complement symbol, the prime, through the parentheses, but if you do so, you have to change the intersection to a union. You have to sort of flip it. It also works the other way. If this were a union here, this would become an intersection here. That would be the second of De Morgan's Laws. Um, and so I'm applying that here, with A being represented by T prime and B being represented by C prime. So the prime on the outside of that goes through the parentheses. I guess I'm also using the fact that the complement of a complement is the original set. I'm using that fact as well. T double prime is T, C double prime is C. It's not like a derivative from calculus. 
Notice the intersection changed to a union. So because of that, and because of the previous line, I can say that this is true. This is representing um, x plus 0.22 plus y. That has to equal 0.88. You didn't see it in my solution here at all. This is a different method that I'm showing you down here. Okay, it's slightly different algebra with different symbols, but we will get to the same final answer there, 0 0.48 in the end. What's the general addition rule? In general, if you have arbitrary events A and B that could have some overlap, the probability of A intersect B, A and B, or excuse me, A union B, is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Again, intersect stands for and, union stands for or. The probability of being an A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both of them occurring. In the diagram here, you're really asking what's the probability of being in T or C or both. You're at, taking the probability of T, essentially x plus 0.22, adding the probability of C, y plus 0.22, but because you counted 0.22 twice, you have to subtract it off at the end. That's the probability of being in T and C. That's why you have to subtract at the end. That's the general addition rule, and it always works, no matter what. Applying that here, using this fact right there, we can say that the probability of T union C T or C is the probability of T plus the probability of C minus the probability of T and C. Then we can use the fact that the um, probability of C can be replaced by this. And we were also given this probability. Right there is uh, 0.22. Simplify. Using algebra, this simplifies to 2P of T minus 0 0.08. Now this equation here, the fact that this equals this can be solved for p of t. Add 0 0.08 to both sides to get this, and then divide both sides by 2 to get this, and there's the final answer. So it's a different method. I mean, you could think about the same method with less symbolism, just using the symbols up here as well. It gets the same answer, but again, it's good to be introduced to these rules. And again, these rules make intuitive sense when you think about the Venn diagram. I haven't proved them, okay? Um, again, on my blog, infinityisreallybig.com, I'll talk about proving some things. Uh, probably for this, this particular post, I'll focus on De Morgan's laws. Uh, but for future posts, I'll probably focus on the complement rule and the general addition rule. You have to approach it in what's called an axiomatic way. To end the video, again, we'll go back to Mathematica here. Um, by the way, if you didn't notice, this is video number four, and it, but it's sample question number eight. I won't necessarily do these questions in order, whereas with the first three, they were in order. Here's the code in this case. If you want to, again, take a picture of it, uh, it's not quite all in there yet. There we go. It's again involving a manipulate, which is what does the animation. Uh, and here's what it looks like. And I did a little extra thing here. I not only have the Venn diagram on the left, but I also have a graph on the right. What's going on here? So this is the Venn diagram, uh, the black box representing the sample space. Instead of circles, I've got rectangles, the red and blue rectangles you see there. The red rectangle represents uh, those who visit a physical therapist. The blue rectangle represents those who visit a chiropractor. Notice that I'm, I got a 0.12 and a 0.22 in there. The 0.22 representing the intersection of the red and the blue, those who visit both a physical therapist and a chiropractor, and the 0.12 representing those who visit neither, outside of them. The neither here depends on what x is. Notice that I'm, I'm sort of saying, you know, x is unknown initially, and ultimately the answer again is x plus 0.22. I want the area outside of both the union of the red and the blue to be 0.12. Now, if I have a small value of x, I really have two separate areas outside of the red and the blue union, here and here. The one on the left is, is constant at 0.12 in area, but the one on the right changes as x changes, and in fact, I sometimes go outside of the box if x gets too big. The value of x that's the answer to the problem is 0.26, and that is the value of x at which I have exactly no area either missing or overlapped on the right. 
okay, when x is 0.26. Here, some area in a sense. It's, there's too much area outside the red and the blue. And here, I, I'm outside the box, so that's no good either. I want the value of x where this right side of this blue rectangle is exactly on the right side of the black rectangle. That's the value of x that's the answer, again, 0.26. And again, at that value of x, um, this graph over here is also showing where the answer is. x plus 0.22 is a, it's a function of x. It's a linear function. It's this line. And notice that when x is 0.26, this dashed line goes over here to y equals 0.48, the answer to the question. Okay? So kind of a cool way to conceptualize it. Thanks for watching.